Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to teach you how to make an external hard drive. Uh, many might be wondering what's the purpose of learning how to make an external hard drive when you can get them ready made. Uh, there are two particular reasons. Sometimes it is cheaper to buy the internal hard drive like this and then buy um, the external casing which kind of looks like this and put it together. It's sometimes cheaper to do that than to buy a ready made external. Um, another very particular popular reason is that say uh, you have a laptop which this computer came out of uh, sorry, this hard drive had come out of a computer, a really old laptop. The laptop was so old, um, it, it, it couldn't even run Windows XP. It wasn't even worth uh, keeping around because uh, Windows XP was on it, but it lagged like crazy. So what we did is took the hard drive out and I'm going to turn it into an external hard drive because the hard drive runs fine. So, you know, it's, it's a good way of uh, salvaging and using parts. So uh, before I get into showing you how you guys uh, to do this, you need to realize that there's two particular types of hard drive. Nowadays, the very common style is called SATA. Uh, to know if you're running SATA, some hard drives will say it directly on the hard drive right there. Or you can just tell by the pin connectors. It, you get like this, um, like a type of L, a long L going down, another L going like that. that that's, a, that's like an obvious indicator. That's a SATA hard drive. Um, if you're running, say, IDE, like this one, it doesn't say IDE anywhere. At least I couldn't find it. But just looking at the bottom, See how many pin connectors there are, and they're, they're only pin connectors, whereas a SATA is completely different. I knew right away that this is IDE. IDE is a very older uh, type of hard drive technology, so that's how you can differentiate. So if you have an old computer and you're trying to salvage a hard drive, that's how you tell the difference. And if you're not sure, you can always just take the hard drive into a computer shop, and they should be able to look at the pin connectors and let you know right away. So, um... Let's get into it. Oh, one more thing. There are two different hard drive sizes. This is 2.5 inch, this is 3.5 inch. You can just simply tell by, you know, your size. 3.5 inch is very generic. It's what you find in regular external hard drives and in desktop computers. 2.5 inch is a more rarer type of ready-made external hard drives, and it's a size that's commonly used in laptops, okay? IDE, which is this, and SATA, which is this, can come in either size, okay? they can come in 2.5 inch or 3.5 inch, either one, okay? So just keep that in mind. So let's get into building the uh, SATA hard drive first. Okay, so I'm putting in uh, the SATA hard drive into an external casing, and I know it's 3.5 inch, so I bought a SATA 3.5 inch external casing hard drive uh, enclosure. Um, even says right there, external 3.5 inch hard drive enclosure, and it's, it is SATA, right, compatible. And of course, this is the circuit board that comes with the external casing. Uh, basically, what you want to do, there are two particular points you want to connect. Uh, right here, all the circuitry you can ignore. I can see right here, this is what's going to connect to the hard drive itself. The, remember those two L shapes I was telling you about? So it goes like left, sorry, this way, then down, and this one goes this way, then down. I'm going to connect it to the, the opposite ends here. So just connect that like so. That's it. That the hard drive is actually connected. But now what you want to do is connect. Whoops. Get the base out of here. I want to get the rest of the hard drive enclosure connected to the actual circuitry and um, the hard drive itself. So what I'm going to do is just slide it in. Uh, at this point, you should put your screws in. I I'm not going to do that just for just for the sake of saving time for this video. But you should do that. I'll do that afterwards. Okay. So after a bit of struggling, I was able to fit it in. So this goes here. Now. This wire here is, is part of the enclosure. You can see there's three pins here to fill in. And obviously, the only one on the circuit board is this here. So all you're going to do is connect that. Just make sure you carefully slide it in. Fits in snug. And on this particular casing, um, in order to make sure that this back doesn't like flop, fall out when I pick it up or something, you got to put a screw in here and a screw in here. Again, I'm not going to do this because it would take too long in this video, but that's how easy it is to put a SATA external hard drive together. Now I'm going to show you how to do IDE, which is almost the exact same concept. Okay, so this time I'm going to teach you how to uh, put together the older technology, which is IDE. Um, just, just to let you guys know that when I was looking for an external casing for this hard drive, I couldn't get it in any big store or small store, like no matter where I searched I couldn't find it. Um, that's because the technology for it is very old now. The only way I could get this external case for it was through eBay. So just a heads up, in case you do have an IDE hard drive and you can't find a case, uh, it's just simply because it's just so rare, no one manufactures them that much anymore. So just a heads up, okay? So basically the connectors, you'll see there's a long line here, then a tiny gap, then you have four pins. 
What I'm going to do is take this part and connect it to the longer str uh, string. Oops. Nope, that's not right. Like so. That's it. So the circuit board is connected. This hard drive just simply slide in. It doesn't matter which way. And of course, it came with two like microscopic screws. You put one in here, one in here, um, and that's it. This this particular style and most 2.5 inch don't have a power button. As soon as you connect it into say your TV or computer or something, then it turns on. Whereas uh, pretty much like every single 3.5 inch hard drive enclosure usually has a power button and a separate wire for power because it, it, it needs more power to make it run. Uh, a good practice before actually screwing in the, the, the screws is simply plug this hard drive into your computer, make sure it actually runs first, like make sure you actually connected everything properly, everything runs fine, then you can put the screws in. But there's one more step you need to do. Um, only if you've bought a brand new internal hard drive. Okay, so under the assumption you bought a brand new internal hard drive and you built it and you put it into an external case like this, um, when you go to my computer, it might it might show up or it might not. Uh, and either way, it, even if it shows up, it most likely won't let you copy large files to it. Um, that's because you have to format it. In order to do that, what you need to do, in Windows 7, uh, Windows 8, I believe is the exact same thing, I'm pretty sure Windows Vista is the same step. I'm not sure about XP and older, but for Windows Vista and newer practically, what you need to do is right click my computer, go to manage. It's gonna take a while to load. Okay, so once it's loaded, um, you're gonna see a list like this. You're gonna hit disk management. And it's, it's basically searched every hard drive currently connected. Okay, so you wanna make sure you don't format the wrong one. That could really screw things up. Uh, so I know that these are these are my current hard drives. Uh, the external one is about 55 gigs. Here it is. Okay, so I've already formatted this, um, so that's why it's showing up properly. But again, this is under the assumption you're getting a brand new hard drive. What you're gonna do is right click it, hit format, and you can name it whatever you want. Uh, doesn't matter. And I prefer NTFS. And I usually uncheck, perform a quick format, and then press OK. I'm not going to press OK because, again, I have formatted already, but uh, that's all you do. Um, and, you know, even if the hard drive is really tiny, like 55 gigs, uh, I have an i7 processor. It still took maybe like almost an hour to format 55 gigs. That's not a big hard drive. And this I, this computer is really fast. However, it still took a while. So if you're if you're seeing that here at the bottom, you know, nothing's really happening and... Uh, the progress rate showing up is taking a while. Don't fret. It just wait for it. Just be patient. If you salvage the hard drive from, say, a laptop, then you might want to try to save your documents and files first, then format it like the way it did. Then it'll be a clean, brand new uh, hard drive. Okay, so that's basically make, make an external hard drive. Very easy. Uh, the pins and screws and etc. are very dependent on what type of case you get. So that's pretty much it. If you found this video useful, check out my website in the description below. Hit the like button, it does help. Subscribe, and thanks for watching.